So you're doing some 10 pulls on the current banner, trying to get Nuvoletter Kazuha, and while you don't get one of them, you do get four star Shingcho. Now what do you get with Shingcho besides a character who is now trying to cosplay Farina? Well, Shingcho is a sword building Hydra user whose burst is a very, very good at applying Hydra. And in this video, we're going to look at the basics of Shingcho, his playstyle, how his skill and his burst work, what you need to build them with, the stats that are important, all of that. So with that being said, we are going to get into this video. Now, just like we do in every one of these videos, we are going to look at the current build of the current Shingcho that we are using. So my Shingcho is level 80 out of 80 with almost 18,000 HP, uh, 1,000 attack, EM 240. His crit split is 33.8 over 175.9 with 202.9 energy recharge and a 66.6 Hydro damage bonus. His weapon is a level 70 R3 Sacrificial Sword, which is one of his best weapons. For artifacts, he is running a four piece emblem of Severed Fates. For Constellation, he is C5. So what these Constellations are, number one, we will have an extra Rain Sword during his burst. Number two, uh, whenever his burst hits an enemy, it will decrease our Hydro resistance. Number three is a normal one. Number four is that it increases the uh, duration of his burst and the damage dealt by his skill during his burst uh, is increased by 50%. And number five is a regular one. His talents are one, six, seven. So not, a, not an amazing build, but a decent one. So now we are going to go look at his normal attacks, his skill, and his burst. So his normal attacks are pretty, you guessed it, normal. Nothing too flashy. His kit doesn't necessarily revolve around his normal or charge attacks unless you're using him on field but they're pretty standard. His charge attack is going to do a flurry, just like most other sword users. Now, his skill is going to do two instances of Hydra damage, a side swing and an upswing, and it applies your character with the wet status. So if you have another element on you currently, like Cryo, it will freeze you. Not only does it do these two uh, slashes, it also puts these three rain swords around you. What these rain swords do is that they increase your interruption to resistance and they decrease the amount of damage that you take if you are hit. So if your on-field character is hit, one of them will explode, decreasing the amount of damage that you take, healing you based off of Xing Cho's max HP and giving you a little bit of interruption to resistance. It does stay with the character if you swap to somebody else. So like if we swap to Noel and have Noel take a hit, it is going to decrease the damage and is going to heal back up Noel. So technically you can build Xingqiu as a healer. It's not really what he's used for, but he does, his, his little healing can stack up and add up over time. So now we're gonna look at his burst and this is really where his utility lies. So his burst is going to summon, in this case, four rain swords because I have C1, normally it would be three. Whenever you do a normal attack with your on-field character, it is going to do a coordinated hydro attack with these rain swords and it's going to apply hydro on the enemy so it is very very good at applying hydro not only that but during this burst the rain swords the four normally be three are going to always be fully charged so if you take damage one will break reducing the damage healing you up and then another one will immediately take its place once the burst runs out the rain swords will still stay until they all expire on their own or until they all break now, if you use his burst, you can swap to another character and it will still do the coordinated hydro attack with your on-field character. So he is similar to Yelon, and we're gonna talk more about that whenever we get to the teams and we talk about uh, teams that he can be good in. And now we're gonna look at artifact sets. So for an early game artifact set, four piece exile is going to be his best. Not only is it gonna get up his energy recharge, but whenever you use his burst, it's also going to give energy to your other characters. So this is gonna be really good for support. If you want to improve his own personal damage, then you can run like a two-piece exile and two-piece resolution, which will get up your attack. For the main stats, on the sands, you have a couple different options. You can do attack, you can do energy recharge, or you can do elemental mastery if he is in a vaporized team, causing vaporized reactions himself. Normally you would want probably energy recharge, especially once you get up into the point of you doing emblem on him instead of exile, then you really, really want the energy recharge because of how emblem works. For your goblet, you're gonna wanna do a hydro damage bonus. And for your circlet, you're gonna wanna do a crit rate or crit damage, whatever you're in more need of, 
and please get a better split than I did. 30 over like, what was it, 180? It's not that great. Get it up into the 50s or 60s or even 70%, right? On your crit rate. For weapons, we have a couple different options. I said earlier, Sacrificial Sword is one of his best weapons. It is phenomenal because of the skill cooldown. His skill does have a long cooldown and energy recharge, which is great. Now for early to mid game, doing the Fishing Fontaine weapon is going to be really, really good. Gets up energy recharge. It is going to also increase the crit rate of your skill attacks. It is also going to increase your energy recharge after using a skill. So this is gonna be very, very good. And this weapon can even follow him if you don't have Sacrificial Sword into Emblem of Severed Fates artifact set. Some other options, you do have the Craftable Inazuma Sword, which gets up his attack, increases the personal damage, and its passive does help with the energy some, but Fontaine's Fishing Weapon is still gonna be better. Going into the three stars for the early game, you do have Sky Rider Sword, which gets up his energy recharge, and it's gonna increase his attack whenever you use his burst, which is gonna be good. You also have Cool Steel, which increases his attack for his own personal damage, and it increases damage against enemies afflicted by Hydro or Cryo, so this is gonna be really, really good. And then of course you do have Harbinger of Dawn if you want him to just be doing a lot of damage with his burst, crit rate and crit damage, this weapon does get up. And because you will be putting him on the field to use his burst and then taking him back off, you don't have to worry about his HP dropping below 90% as long as you're not running with like Farina or somebody like that. So now we're gonna look at a team for Xingqiu and this is gonna be a basic team. This is gonna be kind of how you would model a team that he is in or at least one of the teams. So first we're gonna have Xingqiu, then we are gonna have a main damage on field dealer, being so Noel. Then we're gonna have Zhang Ling for causing off-field vaporize reactions with Xingqiu. Then we're gonna have Kaya. This last slot is really dependent on who you have access to, right? Zhang Ling and Xingqiu work together very, very well. Noel on-field damage dealer works pretty well. Any kind of on-field damage dealer can fill the slot. And then this last slot is going to either be like uh, a healer, a shielder, something along those lines. We have Kaya in here because Noel is our healer. So the way that this is gonna work is that we are going to be using Zhang Ling and Xing Cho's burst together. Let Noel take the field, use her skill, use her burst, and just start being her on-field damage dealer, keeping the whole team healthy, meaning that if we had like Harbinger of Dawn on Xing Cho, it'd be very easy to keep his HP up. Whenever these bursts run out, we are then going to try to get Kaya's burst ready and Xing Cho's burst ready. Xing Cho using his skill every chance that you can to get his burst ready to go as often as possible. We are then going to freeze enemies, letting Noel do shattered on them, getting that extra little bit of damage in. Then again, we're just gonna continue the rotation using, ja using Xing Cho's skill then using Zhang Ling's burst and Xing Cho's burst together with Noel skill and burst. That is how this rotation is going to work. We want the vaporized reactions from our double off field applicators with Noel being the main driving force on the field doing her normal attacks to get Xing Cho's burst to work with her. Zhang Ling causing vaporize, Xing Cho stealing some of those vaporize. So sometimes you've got to time it. Now with how much hydro Xing Cho can apply, he can also just be very, very good in any team that needs a lot of Hydro. For example, a Hyper Bloom team. So this is a team that I actually run in the Abyss, um, and that is Kuki, Nahida, Xingqiu, Farina. Now with this, we are going to be using Kuki's skill, Nahida's skill, Zhang Ling's skill and burst, Farina's skill and burst, but then we're gonna have on-field damaging Nahida doing her normal attacks to apply the Hydro to create the blooms for Kuki's off-field skill to Hyper Bloom them. So any team that needs a ton of Hydro, Xing Cho can go into that team. Xing Cho can go into any team that you would put Yelon in. Xing Cho and Yelon can work together to produce a lot of Hydro, but if you don't have Yelon and you do have Xing Cho, then you can slot Xing Cho in for in just about any slot that you would for Yelon. Right, so a like a typical Hu Tao team would be Hu Tao, Yelan, um, Kazuha, and then like uh, um, Zhang Li. Right, you could take Kazuha out and put somebody else in, but typically it's gonna have Hu Tao, Yelan, Zhang Li. If you don't have Yelan, you could put Xing Cho in there, and it would still work very, very well for Vaporize Hu Tao. So that is gonna be it for this video. If you have any questions, do be sure to leave it down in the comments, and I will see you in the next one.